why do kids need to know how to compose and decompose numbers? Composing and decomposing numbers makes math problems so much easier because it helps kids to make numbers friendlier. I'm Christina Tondevold, The Recovering Traditionalist, and today I would like you to stick around as we investigate the power of composing and decomposing numbers as we work to build our math minds so that we can build the math minds of our students. Now, what exactly is composing and decomposing numbers? Well, it's basically just being able to break apart numbers and then put them back together. Other people might call this part, part, whole. Understanding that you have a whole amount and you can break it into its parts. This is especially how we talk about it in the early grades in elementary, but as kids progress up, we start using the term composing and decomposing. Now, this is a way to take an amount and be able to chunk it into friendlier pieces. So let's say we're doing like 37. 37 to a lot of kids is just 37. They might understand that 37 is 37 individual pieces, but that doesn't often make it friendlier when you go to add, right? So we want them to understand that they can break 37 apart into friendlier chunks. Now the issue is what's friendly? Oftentimes we start out with helping kids understand 37 as 30, three tens, and then seven ones. That is helpful, it's a big idea around place value, but decomposing numbers is so much more than breaking it apart at its place value. So I'm gonna disappear and I'm gonna bring up a screen to show you how to decompose numbers. And we're not just talking about whole numbers here. We're gonna delve into fractions and maybe even some decimals here to look at how this idea of being able to break apart numbers lasts kids all through elementary school and is so, so powerful when they are learning to add and subtract and even multiply and divide. All right, so let's start off with understanding why we want kids to be able to compose and decompose numbers. Well, the first thing is it because it makes it easier and it allows kind of a stepping stone between the formal way of knowing an answer or getting to an answer and just having to count one by one by one. It starts off in the early grades when kids are doing problems like this, like nine plus five. And oftentimes kids will count. And then the next stage that we tend to move kids towards is just know it. But if they don't just know it, they go back down to counting one by one by one. So instead, having some alternative ways to think about the problem can pay off, not just for facts like this, but as we progress through. Now, when there's symbols on a piece of paper like this, it doesn't often um, come right to them about how to decompose to make the problem friendlier. So we start off with the young kids really having visuals to help them visualize how to break apart one of the numbers or decompose one of the numbers and then put it together and compose a new problem here. So depending upon the kids, they may see this differently. You might have one kid who wants to break apart the nine into the five and four. They see five and four with that nine and then they wanna put the five and the five together to make a 10. Other kids may wanna break apart the five and move one of those dots over with the nine to make a 10. So they're breaking apart or decomposing one of those numbers and then putting it together and composing their answer through different ways. Now, as kids progress through, they get into much more complicated problems and we end up moving kids towards the traditional algorithm with problems like this. But in between, there is so much number sense and place value that kids can develop 
And we can use this idea of decomposing and composing numbers to help them build their number sense and their place value understanding. So a lot of times when kids see 87, they realize it's really close to 100. And so they might want to break apart the 38 to make it nicer. Now, again, this is not the only way to decompose. Other kids may see this differently. This is just one example of how breaking apart one of the numbers can make this problem friendlier. So they might break the 38 into a 13 and a 25. Right? It depends upon the problem as to what you're going to break it into. A lot of times we talk about 38 as just a 30 and an 8. But guess what? It could be lots of different ways that we break that number apart, and it just depends upon the problem you're using. Now, when kids develop these concepts of being able to break apart numbers, seeing how numbers relate, it really opens up strategies and it doesn't depend upon grade level. It depends upon their number sense and their understanding of this idea of breaking apart numbers and using them to make the problem friendlier. This little video I'm going to show you is of a first grader. About uh, spring of first grade was when this video was taken. And we were doing the problems in the beginning and I thought, oh, I've got to get this on camera because I can see the strategy he's been using for the first two. And I thought he might do something similar when I gave him that third one. Now, just so you know, these are not first grade problems. Even the second one, 19 plus 25, is not an expectation of first graders to be able to solve that problem. However, when they understand and have built some number sense and they understand this idea of composing and decomposing numbers, they can solve problems in ways that is unimaginable sometimes with uh, that young of kids. So let's take a look. up and that's 5 hundred and then subtract 1 from the 6 and add it here that's 600 and then all we have what that's 45 645 because I forgot I took one away from that and put it over here and that would equal out of these 3 599 and then we took one away from the 6 that'd be 5 for the 6 and that'd be 600 for the 599 and then I just have to add the 45. Now isn't that cool? Like again, this is not an expectation of first graders. However, the thinking and number sense and just the powerful mathematics that that kid is building is so incredible. And oftentimes people will say, well, that's a really long and drawn out process. But he thought of that way quicker than what he was able to explain. And yes, there's explanation. He realized he was off by one. But what powerful thinking he is building right there. And it's thinking that will last him through so much of what he's doing in elementary mathematics. So this idea of composing and decomposing numbers is not just for addition. Right, we can move into doing problems with subtraction. Right, if I think about 16 minus 8, and oftentimes we say, well, kids should just know that. But if they are solving that through the idea of decomposing, understanding that 8 can also be a 6 and a 2, and I could subtract the 6 and then subtract the 2, this idea progresses as they start moving into multi-digit stuff and even larger amounts when they're doing subtraction, right? Now, again, in this last one, there's often people who think, well, that's, real, that's a lot of steps there. There's a lot to keep track of. But let's just for a moment, just for fun, let's compare this, which was basically three steps. I'm at 346. I'm going to take away 10. I know that that's 336, I take away 6, that gets me to 330, and then I take away 2, so it's 328. Okay, compare that to doing the algorithm, right? 
So when I sit here and the, the first thing the kids have to do, number one, they've got to write it down, line it up, because the first one I can do in my head. I don't have to write anything down. But in this one, first step is I got to write it down. And then I have to look at that and say, okay, six minus eight. I don't have enough there in the ones, so I'm going to come over here and regroup. And I'm going to steal basically one from here. But really, it's not a one, right? It's a 10. And then I have to add that there. So I've already, I've done like five steps, and I haven't done any subtracting yet. Yet in the first one, I'm subtracting along the way with each step. And... I'm building such powerful number sense. And don't get me wrong, eventually, yes, we wanna get kids to this algorithm, but the point is that we need to stop and let them understand numbers first and develop this idea of composing and decomposing numbers. Because even in that traditional algorithm, we are breaking apart numbers and putting numbers back together. We are composing and decomposing numbers. Now, the thing that I really love about this idea is that it's not just for whole numbers. We can use this idea when it comes to adding and subtracting with decimals, right? Pause this video for a moment if you don't wanna see how I decomposed it to make it friendlier, but here it is, right? If I chunk off one hundredth, that makes that problem so much nicer, right? Same thing when it comes to fractions. We teach kids all the time these really complex ways to add fractions and specifically mixed numbers. This becomes very difficult for our students, but if they have this idea of being able to break apart a number to be able to make one of the other numbers friendly, right? There's different ways you could have done this and seen this. So if you don't wanna see how I'm gonna do it, pause this video and think about it for yourself. But here's one way that you might be able to think about that problem. Three and three fourths is really close to four. All I need is one fourth more. So I'm gonna chunk off a fourth from the five and a half because five and a half is really like having five and two fourths. So I take off one of those fourths and I'm left with five and a fourth. Right? That makes that problem a whole lot easier to add. And dare I say less steps than the traditional way that we teach our students. All right, even as we move into multiplication, when kids are trying to solve six times seven, and I set this up with an uh, open area model to kind of demonstrate this here, but oftentimes we'll do six times seven. Kids don't instantly remember their multiplication facts, but if they knew how to break one of those numbers apart, it might make it easier. And again, you may break this apart differently than how I'm about to break this apart. So if you don't want to see mine, pause it. Here it comes. I chose to broke, break the seven into a five and a two because multiplying by five and multiplying by two is often a lot easier for people, even adults, but it's really a lot easier for kids. So if they know what six times five is and six times two is, they've decomposed and then they can compose that back together to see how it comes back together to make the original six times seven. Now, one of the things that our kids really struggle with is division, especially as we start getting into multi-digit long division situations. And on a problem like this, we often see kids struggle and they will get the wrong answer when they try to do this using the traditional algorithm. Kids will set this up and they'll do the, you know, how many times does four go into four? How many times does four go into zero? And they'll forget to put their zero there. But instead, if we think about helping kids break the number apart to make it easier. If I have 4,016 and I'm dividing it by four, how could I break that apart to make it easier and friendlier to divide by four, right? And so we start off with ones that are hopefully easier for kids to see how it's nice to break that apart. 4,016 is really 4,000 and a 16, and we can divide each one of those numbers by four. 4,000 divided by four is 1,000, 16 divided by four is four. So the answer would be 1,004. We gotta compose that back together. I decompose to make the problem friendlier, and then I'm gonna compose those answers back together to get my answer of 1,004. 
Now, even as we start getting into ones that look a little bit trickier here, I want to help kids understand and look for decompositions that could make the problem nicer. Is there some way to break this apart? Not just a six, a two, a one, and a nine, like the traditional algorithm teaches us, but is there a way I could break that number apart? Because it's really 6,219. Can I break apart 6,219 into pieces that are friendlier to divide by three? Now, again, if you don't want to see mine, pause this video, think about it for yourself. But here's how I thought about it. It would be way nicer if I thought about it as a 6,000, a 210, and a 9. Because I knew that I could divide each one of those by 3 fairly quickly and easily in my head. So 6,000 would give me the 2,000, then I would get 70, and a 3. So the answer to 6,219 divided by 3 is 2,073. And I'm able to do that all in my head once I'm able to be able to compose and decompose numbers quickly. Now the last piece that I really want to hit home is talking uh, with your students about when. There are a lot of activities in textbooks that have kids just practice decomposing numbers. What are all the ways that you can break apart 24? What are all the ways that you can make 56? But there's not a whole lot of times when they actually ask the kids to talk about and reflect upon when you would use those decompositions. There are lots of different ways that we could decompose 16. A lot of times kids will know the 10 and 6, they'll do the 8 and 8, and then we could keep going from there and there. But those are kind of the top two. But really, there's lots of different ways we could break apart 16. But the way that I should break apart 16 is dependent upon what the purpose is. Why am I breaking apart 16 to begin with? So if I'm doing the problem 24 plus 16, think about how you might break apart 16 to make that problem easier. Now here's the deal. I'm not going to tell you how I would break it apart, but what I want you to think about is the way that you chose to break apart 16 on that problem, is it the same as you would for this problem? When students are solving 498 plus 16, are they going to break apart the 16 in the same way? My guess is no. I know that I didn't. I broke the 16 apart differently based upon the problem the 16 was in. So I want kids to, yes, understand that you can break apart 16 in all these wonderful ways. But the real reason is being able to use that decomposition to make mathematics friendlier. Now again, here's another one. Even when they move into multiplication, talk about the different ways that you could break apart 16 and would that be helpful when you're trying to multiply it by 24. Would that change if I was doing 16 times 356? I don't know, right? Have that discussion. That's the whole point. Okay, so one of the big takeaways I really hope that you got out of that was that it's not just about getting kids to be able to break apart numbers, but it's helping them understand why why should I break apart numbers and when should I? Because there's a time and place for it. Not every problem am I going to want to break apart the numbers. There's times when I want to leave the numbers whole. Okay? So helping our students understand the power, the why behind breaking apart numbers and putting numbers back together, and then understanding when are the two essential pieces to helping your kids be able to use this idea of composing and decomposing numbers. I hope that this has helped you build your math mind so that you can go build the math minds of your students. Have a great day.